To support the channel, consider visiting the link in the description to get unique Mothlike Media merchandise. Elephants are so iconic for a few reasons, but mainly due to their large tusks, a feature that sets them apart from almost any other animal alive today. But throughout prehistory, there are many examples of distant elephant cousins or proboscideans that share these iconic features, but often with a twist, having a different number of tusks, having them differently shaped, or in a different position. And these many different versions of elephants show us how differently elephants could have looked if evolution took a different path. The tusks of proboscideans are basically just giant and highly specialised teeth. While looking at some of the earliest elephant ancestors like Morotherium, you can see that very primitive elephant tusks were just large teeth, and that were most likely only slightly exposed. They would have started out as these exposed teeth that were just slightly outside of the mouth, and then over time became enlargened, and were most likely used for different jobs at different points in the enlargement. Some of the earliest tusked proboscideans like Paleomastodon had a very strange tusk structure compared with modern elephants. They had a small pair of normal elephant tusks, but also their bottom teeth enlarged to create two tusks protruding from their chin, meaning that nearly all of the other proboscideans would have been descendants of these oddly tusked creatures. And this is the reason for a lot of different proboscideans having different tusk structures, because animals like Dinotherium would have lost their top tusks, just being left with the chin tusks and animals like Mastodon would have lost their chin tusks being left with the top row. What's interesting is that some of the earliest true elephants like Prime Elephus had chin tusks as well, showing that animals like Mastodon must have lost their chin tusks independently from true elephants. This also means that when looking at proboscideans, it could be argued that having chin tusks is more normal than not, seeing as how many of these species had them. The most prominent group of proboscideans that had shovel-shaped tusks were gomphotheres, which were not elephants and are in fact quite distantly related, diverging from them at least 20 million years ago, meaning they have existed for nearly twice as long as true elephants. They made up what was the second evolutionary wave of proboscideans, the third wave being true elephants and the first being Dinotherium. Dinotherium were the first large successful group of proboscideans that migrated out of Africa into Eurasia, but they never made it to the Americas, but the shovel-mouthed gomphotheres did and were most likely the first proboscideans to live there. And although they are known from Asia and Africa, they were most successful in the Americas, with the most species being known from these continents. With gomphotheres like Rhynchotherium living from America to Mexico for almost 10 million years. It wasn't until the Pleistocene period that elephants, or more specifically mammoths, would cross over the Bering Strait into North America, which is when the numbers of gomphotheres started to decline. Some of this may have been due to overhunting from humans, as there is evidence that humans ate gomphotheres, but the numbers of these creatures started to dwindle long before humans arrived in the Americas, so it is most likely the arrival of mammoths had something to do with their decline. Gomphotheres also travelled into South America, being quite successful there. Although their numbers were much smaller, gomphotheres also actually outlasted mammoths, being the last surviving proboscideans in the Americas, with the last one dated to 8,000 years ago from Colombia. However, this gomphotheer, known as Notiomastodon, did not have chin tusks, and probably looked a lot like a normal elephant. And this is also true of Suveronius, that was also one of the last living members of this group, dying out around 100,000 years ago. So this means that the last living gomphotheres had lost their chin tusks, and many of the other gomphotheres were possibly outcompeted by mammoths. So why were two tusks better than chin tusks? Despite tusks looking like very specialist features, modern elephants use them for a variety of different tasks, like digging, defending themselves against predators and other elephants, and also to scrape bark off trees. And although it doesn't look like it, it seems that gomphotheres and other proboscideans with tusks on their chins use them very similarly to how elephants use their tusks. For a long period of time, many scientists have speculated that they may have used them for digging, seeing as they are shaped very much like a shovel, specifically that they were aquatic animals and that they used them for scooping up aquatic vegetation. However, despite their appearance, there is evidence of wear found on the bottom tusks of a gomphotheer called Ambelodon, that is very similar to the wear found on the tusks of modern elephants, that is caused from scraping at trees and rocks. Adding to this, analysing gomphotheer fossils has shown that by and large they had very similar diets to elephants, being generalist herbivores, this doesn't necessarily mean that they lived in exactly the same way as two-tusked elephants, 
but that there doesn't seem to be any part of their diet that elephants couldn't have eaten and would have needed specialist chin tusks to gather. So why they had large mouth shovels is a bit of a mystery. But evolution is sometimes like this. Considering that both gomphotheres and elephants had very varied diets, it is possible that there was no perfect tusk structure for their lifestyles, and a few different shapes were adequate for doing the job and it might have only been under extreme selective pressures that enough of a challenge could be presented to eventually see the chin tusk elephants go extinct, and modern elephants survive to this day. And this may have come during the Ice Age, as this is when gomphotheres numbers started to decline. As explained earlier, some of the last surviving gomphotheres like Notia Mastodon and Suveronius lost their chin tusks. There is evidence that many populations of Suveronius would have eaten a lot more grass than previous chin tusk gomphotheres, it is also known that mammoths ate a lot of grass, and it is a big part of the diets of elephants alive today. So it is possible that maybe chin tusks might have hindered them in grazing just a little bit more than modern elephants. Two million years ago, due to the cooler temperatures of the Ice Age, more water was being locked up in glaciers that created a drier habitat. This cooler and drier habitat would have meant that forests retreated and were replaced with grasslands, creating an environment that mammoths were better suited for possibly driving the extinction of the last four-tusked proboscideans. Interestingly, today elephants are in the middle of a tusk transition. African elephants can sometimes be born without tusks, and usually this is a great hindrance and makes it much harder for them to find food and defend themselves. However, tuskless elephants are far less likely to be targeted by ivory poachers, and so despite their disadvantages are more likely to survive. This has created a selective pressure that is making tuskless elephants increasingly more common as the years go by. So elephants went from having four tusks to just two, and now they are facing losing their tusks altogether. Thank you for watching. If you want to be notified of future videos, then consider subscribing. A very big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially my big contributors, Greenfors, Grim Marshall, and Sammy Voz.